Hey y'all, I'm Zana, 28, living my best life here in the Windy City as a marketing exec. Life's been pretty sweet. Got myself a killer apartment downtown with a view of the Chicago skyline that'll make your jaw drop. Every morning, coffee in hand, I soak it all in. It's my little slice of heaven. Family's always been huge for me. We're close-knit, the kind that actually looks forward to Sunday dinners. My big sister, Ammar, is my ride or die. Growing up, she always had my back. I remember this one time in high school when some girl was spreading rumors about me. Ammar stormed right over in the cafeteria and shut it down. That's just how we roll. Zab, you coming over for dinner tonight? Ammar's voice crackles through my phone as I'm heading to work. You bet. Wouldn't miss mom's lasagna for the world. Want me to bring anything? Just your charming self, sis. Oh, and maybe that hot lawyer boyfriend of yours. I laugh. Mike's got a late meeting. But I'll drag him along next time. Promise. Speaking of Mike, things are getting serious. He's talking rings and white picket fences, which is exciting but also kind of terrifying. Are we really grown up enough for all that? When I'm not working or with family, I'm usually at the community center. It's a bit rundown, in a tough neighborhood, but those kids light up my world. I volunteer in an after-school program helping with homework and whatnot. It's not much, but if I can make one kid's day brighter, it's worth it. Miss Zab, can you help me with this math problem? Little Tyrun asks, brow furrowed. Sure thing, buddy. Let's tackle it together. Moments like these remind me I'm doing something right. So yeah, life's smooth sailing. Works great. I've got an amazing family, a hot boyfriend, and I'm giving back to the community. What more could a girl ask for? But just when you think you've got it all figured out, life throws you a curveball. I'm at my desk powering through some reports and my phone rings. Unknown number. Normally, I'd let it go to voicemail, but something tells me to answer. Hello, is this Zana Thompson? Yes, this is she, who's calling. This is Sarah from Child Protective Services. I'm calling about your adopted child, Emily. We need to schedule a home visit. Wait. What? Adopted child? Emily? My mind races, my heart pounds. This has to be some mistake. I don't have any kids, let alone an adopted one. But as Sarah keeps talking, my stomach drops. This isn't a prank. It's real. And just like that, my perfect little world starts to crumble. Sarah, there must be some mistake. I've never adopted a child. Our records show otherwise, Ms. Thompson. We have adoption papers with your signature from two years ago. My head spins. Two years ago, I was buried in a massive marketing campaign. There's no way I adopted a kid without knowing. I'm sorry, but this is impossible. Can you send me those papers? I stammer before hanging up, my hands shaking. This doesn't make any sense. I dial Amur's number. Hey, sis, what's up? She answers, sounding cheerful. Amur, I need to see you. Now, I reply, voice trembling. It's important. An hour later, I'm pacing in her living room when she walks in, her expression shifting to worry. What's going on, Zab? You're scaring me. I take a deep breath, struggling to stay calm. I just got a call from CPS. They said I adopted a child two years ago, but I never did. The papers have my signature on them. My voice cracks. Amar, please tell me you know something about this. Her face drains of color, and she sinks onto the couch, hands trembling. Oh God, Zab. I am so sorry. It was me. I used your identity to adopt Emily. The room spins around me. You? What? How could you do this, Amar? She breaks down, tears streaming down her face. I was desperate. Jake and I tried everything to have a baby, and nothing worked. I saw how easy your life seemed, how you could have kids whenever you wanted. I just, I snapped. Anger surges in me, my hands clenched. So you committed fraud? You used my name, my identity, for this. I never meant for you to find out, she sobs, burying her face in her hands. Jake and I were going to raise her, but he's leaving me now, and I can't do it alone. Zab, please, I need your help. I shake my head in disbelief. Help? You want me to take custody of a child I never agreed to adopt? To pay child support? She nods, guilt etched in every line of her face. Just until I get back on my feet. Please, sis, I don't know what else to do. I take a step back, shaking. Absolutely not, Amar. Do you even realize what you've done? This isn't just about an adoption. You stole my identity. I'm sorry, she whispers, 
I'll make it right. Just please, don't abandon Emily. She's innocent in all this. My head throbs, emotions colliding in my chest. I need to go. I turn for the door, unable to look at her. Zab, wait. What are you going to do? I pull my arm free from her grasp. I don't know, Amur. But whatever happens next is on you. I slam the door behind me. Outside, I slump against my car, and my phone buzzes. It's Mike. Hey, babe. Want to grab dinner tonight? Not tonight, Mike. I, I need some time alone. I end the call, barely able to think straight. As I start the engine, another notification pops up on my phone. Subject. Legal notice. Child support claim. My stomach drops. This nightmare is just beginning. The next day, I'm sitting across from my lawyer, Melissa, who's frowning as she reviews the documents. This is worse than we thought, Zav, she says. Your sister didn't just forge adoption papers. She's opened multiple credit cards and loans in your name. It's a full-blown identity theft case. My chest tightens. How bad is it? We're looking at tens of thousands in debt, and I found evidence she's been stealing from your parents, too. The room blurs as my stomach churns. What do we do? We need to file a police report. This is criminal, Zanab. Are you prepared to press charges? The thought of Amur in handcuffs makes me hesitate, but my resolve is hardening. I need time to think. Later, I'm stress cleaning my apartment when Mike shows up. Babe, what's going on? You've been dodging my calls. I break down, telling him everything. He listens, his lawyer brain working overtime. You need to cut ties with Amir, Zab, she's toxic. But she's my sister, I argue. A sister who stole your identity and ruined your credit. Wake up, Zanap. His tongue cuts deep. You don't get it, Mike. This isn't some client's problem you can solve with legal jargon. This is my family. The argument escalates until he storms out, leaving me feeling more alone than ever. Desperate. I call my best friend Tasha. Girl, I'm coming over, she says firmly. Don't move. An hour later, she's by my side, helping me calm through old bank statements. She points to a series of transactions. These match the dates of the credit card openings. We've got her, Z. I swallow hard, the betrayal settling in. I'm pressing charges. The next day, I'm at my parents' house, bracing myself. Mom, Dad, there's something I need to tell you. As I explain, their faces shift from confusion to disbelief to anger. That's impossible, Mom says, shaking her head. Amir would never. Dad cuts in. Are you sure you didn't agree to this adoption and just forgot? You've always been forgetful. Seriously? You're taking her side? I choke on the words, feeling crushed. I can't believe you don't trust me. We're not taking sides, Mom insists, voice shaking. But this is a serious accusation. Maybe if we all sat down together. No, I stand, fighting back tears. I can't believe you doubt me, your own daughter. Ignoring their pleas, I walk out. I'm on my own in this fight, but I'm not backing down. It's time to clear my name, no matter the cost. The courtroom feels suffocating as I take the stand, staring at Amir sitting across from me, looking smaller than I've ever seen her. Miss Thompson, please recount when you first learned of the fraudulent adoption. I clear my throat, gathering every ounce of strength. It was a regular Tuesday. As I recount the call from CPS, Amir's lawyer tries to undermine me. Isn't it possible you agreed to this adoption and simply forgot? Absolutely not. I would never forget adopting a child, I respond firmly. The prosecution presents mountains of evidence, forged signatures, credit card statements, even security footage of Amr using my credit cards. The courtroom erupts as Amr breaks down, sobbing. I'm so sorry, Zab. I never meant for it to go this far, she cries. The judge's gavel echoes through the room. Amira Thompson, you are hereby sentenced to five years in prison for multiple counts of fraud and embezzlement. As they lead her away, I feel a mix of relief and sadness. It's finally over, but at a heavy cost. Outside the courtroom, my parents approach, looking hesitant. Zab, honey, we owe you an apology. My mom begins, her voice cracking. Dad nods, his eyes downcast. We should have believed you from the start. Can you forgive us? I'm torn. Part of me wants to hug them, but the pain is still fresh. I need time. I manage. In the weeks that follow, CPS arranges for Emily to be placed with a loving family who went through the proper adoption process. 
The court and CPS ensured her well-being, giving her a fresh start and shielding her from the complexities of Amar's actions. Knowing she's in a caring home gives me a small sense of peace. Back at work, my boss Janet calls me into her office. Zanab, I've been impressed with how you've handled yourself through all of this. We'd like to offer you a promotion, head of marketing for our New York office. I'm stunned, New York? Wow, can I think about it? That night, I meet Mike at our favorite restaurant. The tension is palpable. I got offered a promotion in New York, I tell him. He looks surprised and frowns. You're not considering it, are you? Your whole life is here. My whole life just got turned upside down, Mike. Maybe I need a fresh start. What about us? Am I supposed to uproot my career for you? His words sting. I realize that we're on different paths. I don't think there is an us anymore, Mike. We want different things. The breakup is painful, but as I walk away, I feel lighter. The next day, I join a support group for identity theft victims and sharing my story helps me heal. I'm inspired by the strength of the people I meet and for the first time in months, I feel like myself again. One evening, as I pack for New York, Tasha comes over to help. You sure about this, Z? It's a big move. I look around at my half-empty apartment and smile. Yeah, I am. It's time for a new chapter. You better FaceTime me every day, or I'm coming to drag you back. We laugh and reminisce, and despite everything, I'm excited about what's next. I've got a killer job waiting, true friends who've stood by me, and a chance to start fresh. The old Xana might have been a victim, but this new Xana? She's a survivor, ready to take on the world. And that's the end of Zab's story. Now, I've got a question for you. If you were in her shoes, would you be able to forgive Amir and your parents for their betrayal? Or would you cut ties completely, like Zanab did, and start fresh? It's a tough call, families are complicated, and trust, once broken, is hard to rebuild. But everyone has their own views on forgiveness and family loyalty. Drop your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to hear what you do. And if you enjoyed this wild ride, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more stories that make you think. Your support keeps these stories coming.